Welcome back. I'm joined now by Misty Orpin. She's the Executive Director of Common Ground Arkansas. Good to see you. Hey, nice to Thank see you, you too. Thank you for being here. For those who do not know what Common Ground Arkansas is, I'm going to give you a chance to explain. Well, real quick, we are a nonpartisan nonprofit that wants to make sure that Arkansans have the resources to make their own decisions to participate in government the way that they best, um, you know, feels the best route for them to take. Um, and we don't, we are very careful not to tell people what to think, but to just give them resources so they can form their own opinions. So you deal with a lot of data is what I like to tell people. So. Yeah, oh, I'm a big numbers nerd. <laughs> yeah, spreadsheets are my thing. All right, let's talk about what you've been looking at. Just kind of initially, uh, you've put out some numbers about the, the makeup of the legislature from mm -hmm. a partisan perspective maybe how that reflects um, uh, against what we kind of see in political outcomes. There's a big difference. Uh, and then gender as well. Let's go po uh, partisan first. Yeah, so of course, I think a lot of people know the legislature is around 18% Democrat and 82% Republican. And that is pretty much the same if you look in each house as well. So the House and Senate are both, I think the, the Senate may be 17 and the House may be 18. So it's very similar. And it's almost a polar opposite of what we saw, you know, 15, 20 years ago, where that was the Republican percentage. I think when Jim Hinderman was telling me when he first started, they were around 13% um, or 13 Republicans in the House, right? right? So we've just kind of done that flip and that's where we are. Um, and I then- can, I can remember a day when there was one Republican in the Senate. So it was Joe Yates man. up in uh, Northwest Arkansas. It's a very different time. Yeah, yeah. but now, now on gender, what do we see? Yeah, so on gender, let me pull up some numbers so I don't tell you wrong, but it's about a quarter of the legislature is female, so just under that, 23% of the legislature uh, are, are women representatives or senators, and there's a big difference between the House and the Senate on that, okay? So 26% of the House is female, but just 14% of the Senate is female. And the breakdown on that by party, if you look at, there's also a big difference. So 50% of the Democrat representatives and senators are women, but only, I believe it is, 17% like yeah, right. of the Republicans are women. Yeah, that's Big interesting. Difference. It's interesting. And then if you just look at general population, usually out of voting population, about 52% yeah. is female and 48% mm -hmm. is male. So you just do not see that kind of same reflection uh, in there. You don't, especially within the parties. And I, I, I need to do some more research to see, uh, you know, is that because women just aren't, they don't run as often? Or are they less successful when they do run? It'll yeah. be interesting research. It feels like there's more Republican women, though, than the percentage numbers there would, are. would indicate. There so. are. It's changing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So another thing that you've looked at is the type of bills that have been mm -hmm. filed. And I think one of the things that's interesting to me, I mean, hats off to my guest on Capitol View this week, Senator Jonathan Dismang. They're moving some appropriations bills through the legislature. They are. Yeah. Um, and then there's just a lot narrower. narrower or narrower funnel, if I can get that word <laughs> yeah. out. That's a complicated one right there. Uh, when you start looking at other um, types mm -hmm. of bills that are being filed. So. Yeah, so if we look at just in the first three weeks, there have been around 400, a little more than 400 bills filed. And 38% of those are appropriation bills, right? So they're just things that you have to, you have to get that money out in the right way. So 38% are appropriation bills. But then if you look at below that, how many of, you know, what are the highest numbers of bills? Government or regulation of business. So mm -hmm. that is the highest one, uh, number of bills that have been filed. And then we go into health care, a lot of retirement bills. And the reason for that is because you probably know they changed some of the rules for fiscal impact statements. And those bills now have to be filed at the beginning of session. So that's why we're seeing so many of those dumped already instead of later because they just have to be done now. I think we get caught up a lot in some of the policy arguments yeah. that are there, um, and there is a, certainly a role in the regular sessions for that type of thing, but it's still about putting a budget together and making state government function. And again, I go back to the appropriations yeah. bills there. People get tired of hearing me probably talk about I mean, that that's their number as one duty <laughs> is to manage the money. Come to, our, come to the Capitol for a minimum of 60 days every two years is what mm -hmm. they're supposed to do. And we have all joked around that we wish they'd come every 60 years for a minimum or maximum <laughs> of two days, but uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, um, you are in the midst of a presentation that um, I like to, you, you kind of mm -hmm. summarize it as the good, the bad, the super specific, and the necessary. So yeah. we've got about 60 seconds on each of these and I'm gonna hit them all. Okay. Tell me what's 
good right now in the legislature? Yeah, so there's broad good and there's narrow good, right? So there are bills, good bills that affect a whole lot of people. And that's, for example, that's uh, Senator Boyd's bill where you are no longer a criminal if you leave your car running. So if you use your remote start in the morning to warm up your car, right now that's illegal. So this bill would make that not illegal. Good bill. Um, Representative Pilkington's expansion of Medicaid or extension of Medicaid for uh, new mothers up to a year instead of the current 60 days. That impacts a whole lot of people in Arkansas and it's a very good bill. Then there's the narrow good. An example of that, they're super specific, like Representatives Evans bill that means a level three or four sex offender can't have a drone with a camera on it. And this actually happened because, you know, it came out of an instance where there was a sex offender using a drone to spy on people in their backyards. And so good bill, super specific, doesn't impact as many people as the others. Does a bad bill not affect enough people or is it just bad from your point of view? So, so bad bills, according to Common Ground, they're things that are unconstitutional. I mean, bad, you take an oath to the Constitution when you go down, you know, and uh, are sworn into office as a legislator. So if they're unconstitutional, if they grow business regulation, and if they uh, dilute the power of the people, and that could be through the ballot box or other means. All right, there's enough of those to keep you busy? You know, <laughs> there are fewer, way fewer bad bills than there are good bills and just the necessary bills, like the appropriation bills and cleaning up just obsolete language. All right, so you skipped over there to the necessary. The necessary bills are the ones that, that do clean up language. Right, that, that they're, they're just the things where you passed a bill last session, it didn't actually work out the way that you thought that it would, now you have to go clean up the language, right? There's uh, a lot of those. What's the super specific? Give me some examples. So the super specific, they're things that don't really impact a whole lot of people like, you know, uh, Representative Collins's uh, Urban Service District bill. The only urban service district in the state is Kamek Village. They want to be able to legally offer specific services that they're not, well, they are currently offering. It's just not enumerated in the law. So super specific, almost just cleaning up stuff that needs to happen. It doesn't really affect that many people. All right, and you said there's a little over 400 bills right now. Which, Last I checked, there were 383, yeah. and that was a couple days ago, so yeah. I'm sure we're over four now. For sure. So. We often see as many as 3,000 bills mm -hmm. filed in a legislative session. This session's been off to a slow start. Do you think that yeah. we're gonna hit that big number again? Or do you think that maybe even because of the fact that uh, the uh, Sanders administration wants to do some omnibus bills, it may not mm -hmm. be as packed with legislation as we normally see. I think that's a good observation. And we also have a lot of first term legislators in and a lot of times in their first term, maybe you're not as comfortable early in the session for running bills. You kind of got to feel your way through and figure out how to do that process. And it may be that toward the end of the session, we see some of those freshmen filing more bills. I mean, it hasn't stopped you know, Senator McKee has already filed a couple of bills. It hasn't stopped some of them, but I think some of them are more hesitant to just go in full bore out of the gate. My experience has been in 30 years of covering the Capitol, they always figure out how to start filing <laughs> bills. So it's, yeah, it's not more Somebody them. explains it to them. What's, uh, what's, what's next on Common Ground's agenda? Yeah, you obviously, what else yeah. are you doing in the session as well? Yeah, so in the session, we are just, again, trying to provide those nonpartisan, unbiased resources to people through transcripts of committee hearings and, you know, what's happening on the Senate and House floor, descriptions of the bills in layman's terms so that people can understand them. Um, and then looking forward, I think you'll see us very active on protecting the power of the people at the ballot, looking at how we enact primaries in ways that people can have more choice and um, also making sure that we're not closing our primaries and giving people less choice. The website is? It's commongroundar.org. All right, she's Misty Orpin. She is the executive director of Common Ground Arkansas. Always a pleasure. Hope Thank you'll you, come Ruby. back. We'll yeah. have more things to talk about. Thanks for having me. All right, you bet.